Praise the Lord. I surrender. Sing that song in a few minutes. All to is a yearning in somebody's heart that you are more than what you are today. There is that hunger, that aspiration. But you are going to tell God, Father, in the name of Jesus, show me by through your word what I need to do to put down the things I need to put down and to pick up what I need to pick up in my life. Lord Jesus, by your spirit, speak to me, Lord. I need to surrender the things I need to surrender. And I need to pick what I need to pick, Lord. Help me, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Lord, we exalt you. And we ask that you speak to us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Please have your seat and put your hands together for Jesus. You are welcome into God's presence. And God bless you in Jesus' name. We are looking at the topic, developing godly character with emphasis on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Character is what defines you. Character is what defines you. There are different realms in human manifestations. And you cannot manifest beyond the level of your character development. There is a level of endowment that is apportioned to where you are in your character development. Because your character defines you and it is what defines you that determines who you are. And who you are determines what you do. What you do determines what you get. It's a process. It's a process. Who you are is very, very important because that's what determines what you do. 
Many times you see people praying for what they are not qualified for. Because they lack the understanding of where they are in God's care. One interesting scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. Where the Bible says that God weighs men's actions through what they do. He said, God is a God of knowledge. He said, by him, actions are weighed. There was a man that God weighed his action in the Bible. That was the man Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel chapter 3. He ascended the throne as a hereditary. Because it was his right from his family. But one day God came to him and said, I have weighed you, I have weighed your character and I found you wanting. Therefore you are not qualified for that seed. And God had to send him into the wilderness for seven years. To go and develop his character. When you see yourself always getting and losing, there is a character problem in between. The Buddha had actually ascended the throne. But God one day came to him and said, I've weighed you and I find you wanting. And because I find you wanting, you are not fit to remain on the throne. And he took him into a wilderness journey to go and learn how to recognize God and how to walk with God. So many people are stagnated because we are not conscious of what we do. And simply again, because we are not conscious of developing ourselves God-wise. We are looking at God in the character. But I want you to understand this. It is your character that determines the level you go in life. Somebody said character can take you, or no, hard work can take you up. Character can bring you down to some extent. But God cannot take you. Now mark my word, God cannot take you beyond your character. In the other world, you can follow some other area and get there. Eventually, if you lack character, you will, the person will still come down. But in the kingdom, God takes no man further than what his character can carry. Galatians chapter 4 verse 2, he said, The hair of the house, even though he is the owner of all things, he said he is no different from a slave because he is not mature. But rather he is being placed under tutors and instructors to teach him until he reached to a level of character development where what truly really belongs to him can be handed over to him. That means there is a level you get to, what belongs to you will be given to you. And there's a level you are, what belongs to you will be held back for you to learn your lesson into the school of maturity. And what is the difference between an adult and a child? It's not the body size. Because I have seen some children that they are that, that are bigger, heavier, and taller than their parents. It is in knowledge. It is in behavior. Do you ever wonder when people want, a, for, want an employment, you not know, to a managerial level? They will be looking for somebody with experience. They are not looking for who the, the American call the rookie. New bread. Because they found out that if you are still in a particular work at a managerial level for a very long time, then you have character. Praise God. Whatever you need to ascend to your throne of greatness will be delivered to you in the name of Jesus. Now, how do we begin? Because for every journey, there is an entering point. How do we begin? If you look at that scripture where we took our test, where you start from verse 16, 
16 was saying, if you walk in the spirit, you will not gratify the works of the flesh. In other words, there are two opposing factors. One that works in the spirit and one that gratifies the works of the flesh. And both are seen in the way we react to issues and the way we manifest ourselves. Now, why is the Bible talking about walking in the spirit? This is very, very crucial. When you look at Ephesians chapter 4, 17 and 18, Paul was saying that there are people there was a way you walked when you were in the world. There was a way you behaved when you were in the world. Why is the Bible talking about when you were in the world? Because he knows nobody became a Christian by just being born in a the, in the church. There will be a time you must make a decision that even though I have been in the church, I must accept Jesus by responding to the gospel of Jesus. That is the entry point into developing Christian character. Because everything you do when you are not born again, as Isaiah 64 verse 6 said, your own righteousness is like a filthy rag in God's sight. Your own righteousness, trying to be good. Because the motivation of trying to be good is not a motivation that intends to honor God. At times it's just a motivation for fear of judgment. God knows I'm trying. So that people will not see me in a bad light. But we are looking at a system where you have developed a character like we had in the church that a man said, how can I do this evil against God in all situations? That your allegiance is towards God. Your submission is towards God. Your interest is towards God. Until a man gives his life to Christ, his journey into spiritual development has not started. That is the entry point. What have you done with Jesus? Is he your Lord? That's the point. Then, after you have given your life to Christ, that will take us to the second point. And that second point is cultivating a walk in the spirit. Cultivating a walk in the spirit. Very important, I must mention. Do you notice that the Bible may call it the fruit of the spirit? I will get there. The fruit. Now, there will be no fruit of a mango if there is no mango tree. Praise God. There is no fruit of a cashew it has no cashew tree. So, and every tree bears after its kind. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis. Every tree bears after its kind. Two, trees don't struggle to produce fruits. If a tree is not producing fruit, it's because it's not being well nurtured. That is where the journey of cultivating the character to walk in the spirit begins. What do you nurture yourself and your mind with? In the book of Ephesians, I mentioned, the Bible said, 
Some people were walking in the futility of their mind. If you read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23, he said, renew the spirit of your mind so that you will not be, able, be walking in the futility of your mind all the way the people that are outside are walking. Now that has to come with what do you nurture your mind with? What you nurture your mind with is what determines the way you think. A prophet told us 23 verse 7 he said how a man thinks is what he is. You know we have raves of the moment several raves of the moment. Movie raves raves uh, cell phone internet and all the rest of them. The more you focus on these things, they form the image of that thing you are focusing in you. That becomes what you display. We call it civilization, but those civilization that is taking you out of spiritual mentality is what is keeping our generation where we are today. you focus more on is what forms an image of what you think about. If you are focusing this on the word of God, the Bible says, as you focus on the mirror of the word of God, it says you are being transformed from one glory to the other. The only agent of human transformation that can take a murderer to go all over the world to preach the gospel is the word of God. The only power that can change you and, that can, and transform your destiny and break the power of stagnation in your life is the word of God. But you know one thing, the devil will not want you to study the word. Every effort he's making is to make sure that you read every other thing except in the word of God. Or if you read, he wants you to understand every other book you read but not understand the word of God. He wants to frustrate you because he knows that that is where your destiny lies. And ignorantly, so many believers are yielding to that. After all, I've tried. I couldn't understand. So what do I need to do? You close it up. Instead of engaging the Holy Spirit, now I can't understand this. Help me. Help me. You cultivate the work of, of the, by the Spirit of God by cultivating a study and an in-depth understanding of the Word of God. Because the Holy Spirit in you has his own food. And the only food of the Spirit is the Word of God. The Holy Spirit only operates on the dictates of the Word of God. So you must give your attention to cultivating your spirit man, God wise. It must be your number one endeavor. I've interviewed so many big time businessmen and women that are Christians. And I found out that one thing is running into their lives. They don't joke with the word of God. One of them separated business with his elder brother because of the word of God. Blood brother. He will take money to go and put it for offering. The brother will say, why are you putting such an amount of money in the church? The same father, the same mother, 
But because he cannot compromise what God says, they have to divide the business. Today, if, how many of you know Koskaris? How many of you hear about his brother? Nobody has anything about his brother. But he started his business with his elder brother. What separated them was the word of God. He can't compromise the word. And his elder brother said, no, you can't do that. He said, if it is that, let's separate. Let me tell you something. I'm not telling you to, the journey you are going is not a rosy journey. People will reject you. But let me tell you something. Those that rejected you, tomorrow they will be the one to clap for you. That is what I've discovered about the word of God. That is my personal experience about God's word. It will, this word will put you into trouble. Men will reject you. Even they will even suck you in your office because your word level is too much. But at the end of the day, those, if you continue in the word, those things will begin to shoot out. They will be the one to celebrate you. I preached once in my hometown. A big said, everybody gathered, thousands of people. When I was growing up in that place, I joined the scripture union. You know, the rich people in my community came to my mother. Stop this boy. Because the scripture union you know, people, when they grow up, they will say their parents are worldly. They don't look at them. They tried, it was that frustration that made me to run out of the house. Years later, I came to preach in that same town. Now, many of them are old people. They are having problems with their children. They are having challenges with their children. I mentioned what happened years ago. I said, some of you said here, this boy will not will forget his parents. One of the women came to me and said, yes, I was among the people that said it. But we now know that we are fooling ourselves. Let me tell you something. God's word can take you where no man can take you. Forget about the challenges that come with it. The God behind the world and the Spirit of God behind the world is far greater than all the millions of people that are against the word of God. That is the comfort I want to give to you. Make up your mind that from today I must walk with God's word. Because that's the only instrument that the Spirit of God uses. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 said, And Daniel proposed in his heart. That didn't make him the favorite, the most favorite in the kingdom. That I will not eat the king's meat. I will not do business the world that are doing their own. I will not live the life. I love the world that are living their own. He proposed in his heart. But that pitched him against the authority. You know he was thrown into lions then. Not because, they were, not because he did what he expected. Because he wanted to obey the word. But many believers have prayed that Daniel 5 12, 5 verse 12, and Daniel chapter 6 verse 3 to come into their life without taking step to find out what took Daniel to where he is or where he was. God's word is the element or the power that cultivates a work of the spirit. Because it is only the word of God that can transform you. With all your gettings, get God's word. If you don't understand, Holy Spirit, help me. And your life will not remain the same in the name of Jesus. Now, let's go to our passage. Galatians chapter 5. I just want to pick some things there. 
just turn to the, the book of Galatians chapter 5. I've discussed verse 16. He said, I say then walk by the Spirit. And you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit. And the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. He said, but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now let's jump to verse 22 he said but the fruit of the spirit is love joy patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control Against such things, there is no law. And the underground interpretation of the Bible, there is only one fruit. That is why in the scripture, the Bible didn't say the fruits. Did you see it in your Bible? Look at your Bible. It didn't say the fruits. And he gave us nine things. He said the fruit. God understands grammar. He, he knows what he was talking about. The fruit of the spirit is just one. And that is love. The remaining eight are different ways through which love manifests itself. What the scripture is telling us. The fruit of the spirit is love. That means it is abnormal for a Christian to walk in hatred. It's not part of it's not part of Christianity. It's not to be it's not to be heard of. Say that God is love. I will say, I walk in love, walk in God. In verse 13, let us look, go back to that scripture of Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 13. For you are called to freedom, brothers. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But serve one another through love. For the entire law is fulfilled in one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out or you'll be consumed by one another. The scripture now says, by new birth, a seed of love is already planted in you. And this love manifests itself against self-centeredness in you. So the real battle of the walking with God or the flowing Christian character is self. we live our life until I'm satisfied no other person comes and goes that is not the Christian lifestyle Christianity is a call to the death of self until a man is died to self God cannot elevate him that is one of the reasons many Christians are not rising Jeremiah told Baruch in, in, in Jeremiah chapter 45, he said, if you are seeking great things, then don't seek them for yourself. 
Seek great things for the sake of God and for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of God's glory. Every man I have asked that have had a great business as a Christian has only one consciousness. I want to solve people's, I want to solve people's problem. Not I want to ride the best car. Not I want to live in the best houses. Not on what I want, but what I want to do for my society. So many Christians are crawling because they are living a self-centered life. And when self is in place, God is out. Our call is a call for sacrifice. It's how he said, we are called to serve one another. Jesus did something in John chapter 13. He took basin with a napkin and started washing the feet of the disciples. And when he got to Peter, Peter said, no, you will not wash my feet. You know why? Peter understood the culture of the Jews. If you are walking into the house of a Jewish man, there is a slave or a servant out there that will face you wash your feet before you step into the house of the master. So it is a job resigned for slaves. Not for great men like Jesus. So Jesus now demonstrated this and Peter said no. From the culture of where I was coming from, Big men, the great men, don't wash the feet of their followers. They occupy the first place for their followers to serve them. Jesus said, no. A new kingdom has set in. A new dimension has set in. A new orientation has set in. Christianity is not like all your tradition. In Christianity, the greatest serve the least. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? In Christianity, the greatest, so the more you are in doubt, the more servant you should become. The more you are blessed, the more servant you should become. I spoke to a man I knew where he had nothing. When I was in his car, he was telling me he would judge somebody. I said, for how much? He said, for 3,000. I said, do you know why God brought you to where you are now? He said, he doesn't care. I said, drop me here. I said, drop me here. Drop me here. That was uh, on the way to Tampa anyway. That is the road to Tampa anyway. I said, drop me here. That was the last we saw. If you don't understand why God is raising you, you have no business being a part of his kingdom. The greatest will be the servant of all. Don't use your blessing as a means of oppression. That is why so many Christians are not rising. When they want to talk about people are talking about that, God, what has he got? The Bible says all things are yours. But the kind of prayer she's praying in the evil, in the in the in the natural world. We are not getting half of doing paying part of that price into, into the spiritual, into the Christian world. The key element of spiritual character is demonstrating love. When you love, that is when you can exhibit joy. That is when you can be peaceful with people. That is when you can exercise patience. That's when you can show kindness. That is when you can be good to people. That is when you can be faithful. In this, our church, we have had people who believers are giving a job into their hands. They will not do it and they take their money. And you expect God to open another door for you. No way. <laughs> he, he 
is more reasonable than all of us. He said, if you are faithful in small thing, and you are faithful in what belongs to another person, how can he give you your own? Many people are supposed to be beyond what they are, but because we are not abiding by the spiritual principle of manifesting the character of Jesus, he can't trust us. Because everything that God places in your hand is on the basis of trust. Are you waiting to there? It's on the basis of trust. One big man of God said, one day he was praying, God told him, come out. He came out, he said, the moon was shining that night. God said, draw a human being. He said, he drew it on the ground. God said, clean it up. He said, clean it up. He said, look, any day you take my place, you see the way you clean up this thing? That's the way I'm going to clean it up. Put yourself under the mighty hand of the Almighty. And the Bible says He will raise you in due season. And how that can happen is when you recognize that now you have been bought with a price, you are no longer your own. You now belong to a master. is why verse 16 said, if you are led by the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 said, as many are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Why the word led? Because when you begin to walk by the Spirit, you are no longer dictating what, should be, what your action should be or what your response should be towards a situation. Something happened where I was living, and uh, somebody just embarrassed somebody. And I called her. I said, Lee, come. He said, you know, I was angry. I said, yes. Do you know that that anger will deprive you God's blessing upon your life? He said, by how? I said, it shows that anger is in you. When you squeeze towel, wait towel, what comes out? What comes out? The only way to know what is in you is when you have been squeezed. This squeeze is when your true character comes out. What is inside of you comes out. So you don't try to, to defend it. Begin to know that this is the area I need help and go come to the Holy Spirit for help. But we're surprised that when you are broke, it's when money that is careless money will come across your way for you to use it to solve your personal problem. seriously financial need and God is watching to see is he or she faithful enough for me to commit more things into her, his or her hand praise God you will pass God's test in the mighty name of Jesus by God is a God of knowledge he said by him actions are weighed I just wanted to rise up and talk to him just a few minutes and tell Jesus character is everything character the fruit of the spirit of God is everything that is only what God will see in you and in me to take us to our desired end tell him I say Lord help me Jesus I need your help Areas I have been falling short of your glory. I need your help. Why must I remain on the same spot? Why must I be marking time? That thing that is causing me to remain on this same spot, Father, re remove it from me. Search me. Place your searchlight on me. Remove every guy. Remove every iniquity. Remove everything that you are seeing in me that is unworthy and make me who you want me to be. So shall it be in Jesus' name.